Yeah, blessed love to each and everyone that is already in the house. Just full joy tonight being in a man on this wonderful Sunday afternoon. 3.33, the triple three p.m. time, live and direct. Tiger's Nest. family. And as I said, we give thanks to the Naya Big Yard. Give thanks to such melodious sound. And blessed love to each and everyone. As always, we definitely give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life, Emperor Haile Selassie the first. Welcoming you into the nest, into the tiger's nest of Sunday afternoon, just holding a meditation clean. And of course, we are preparing ourselves for this evening. Of course, you know what I'm talking about, the tiger's temple. And even the reasoning that we're having here today is the Bible scientific, where we are going to be touching upon some scientific aspects of the Bible, at least, you know, from a a, a technological point of view. So you're, you're definitely going to want to sit in with us. Make sure you share the stream, my family. Just copy and paste and put it on Facebook and put it on Instagram and put it somewhere else and let the family know that you need to hear this one. We're going to have a wonderful afternoon here. Uh, holy, holy, holding a holy meditation. And as I said this evening, yeah, this is where it's at. We're going to be in the Tiger's Temple. I hope you have already received your pass for the Tiger's Temple this evening. If not, it is not too late for sure. Up until the very hour, even while it is in process, you can definitely contact us, Priest Isaac Institute at gmail.com. That's Priest Isaac Institute at gmail.com, pardon me, and get your, your pass for the Tiger's Temple tonight. Of course, brother, brother Jasik, he's definitely ready and rearing to go this evening. I already had a word with him today. And of course, brother Bozia Heru, definitely for sure, ready on his part to bring his information. And I myself, well, I mean, all of this is preparing. All of this right here now, family, is preparing for the Tigers Temple this evening. All of this here is preparing for the wonderful time. So we're gonna have a wonderful discussion. That's a discussion this evening, or a reason. We ain't gonna be dissing or cussing. It's more like a reason that we will be having this evening. And we start at eight promptly. Remember, it, it, it's just a, uh, a small contribution you make to the Tiger's Temple. Remember the Tiger's Temple is each and every Sunday. Something new, something different different vibration in the Tiger's Temple every Sunday. So you can be a monthly subscriber to the Tiger's Temple, really, in a sense. You know, your monthly pass, really, if you want to call it that. Your monthly pass, and you can definitely come in and full joy what it is that we have to offer to you. So looking forward to your presence this evening, for sure. And as I said, we are going to have a wonderful time, a wonderful meditation and a wonderful vibration. So so just check in, you know, want the family to come in before I, I bring to you what I got for you, because I got some nice vibrations here for you today, you know, in the me time, not me time, the time ain't me. Let me show you some of our, our new, this is actually backstage here. You know? This is some of our new um, uh, garments just rolled out. Of course, tiger's nest material in different um, colors and 
assort, assortments and, 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 and uh, sweatshirts and jackets and t-shirts, etc., etc. So we're talking about the tiger's nest. Make sure you visit our website, that's priestisaacinstitute.com. Make sure you visit our website, priestisaacinstitute.com, of course, and, and get your shirt delivered to you. Let everyone know that you are a part of the, the Tiger's Nest crew. Yeah, man, for sure. Oh, look at that one. Real beautiful. You're going you're gonna to love to have that one when you come and join us here in Antigua. This one is like a, a, a tropical vibe, but it's the royal blue. Make sure you come in and you know get your your tiger's nest uh, uh, sweatshirt. You get the jacket. What else you got? You got your hoodies. Just visit the the website precisinginstitute.com, and uh, definitely you can go to the full catalog of garments. Look at that, all designed by the honorable Prince Alomase. Oh yeah, definitely look at that. I am the best. I am the best. You know what that's all about. I am the best and I deserve the best and only the best is coming to me now. You see it here? And of course, you know, and you have different, um, oh, these are for the young little babies. Wow, 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 look at that. I was looking for another, oh, here it is again. I am the best and I deserve the best. And only the best is coming to me now, you know? And of course, that is specifically for the, the young ones, well, for all of us, but you know, as part of the, the Institute and a part of the homeschool program, that is our mantra, that is our motto. Eh? So make sure, you know, that you make sure you get all of what is there that is available. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Family is all about the works. Now, the the Bible code. Let's get straight to it. Eh? There is a a documentary speaking of. Just going to give you a kind of prep before we get into this. The 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 Bible and the scientific aspect of the Bible. I've done a few programs on the Bible code especially leading up to uh, an online lecture that I would have. Anything having to do with the Bible, I always find the time to get into the, the whole aspect of the Bible itself, the Bible code. Now, several years ago, I came across a book by an author named Michael Drossin, and you will see him in a moment too, Michael Drossin. And the name of the book was, yes, The Bible Code. And Michael Drossin now in the book, The Bible Code, was showing the discovery of some Jewish rabbis. Not Hebrew Israelite priests, now Jewish rabbis. Just what you thinking, that's what they are. So these Jewish rabbis now uh, created a, a software as such, especially in that time, we're talking about the, seven, the 80s, I think it was the 80s or so this was discovered. And the code now, making the long story short, because it's a long story, the code eventually came to the, perfect, the perfection or its perfect stage, where we now it will take the Bible itself, uh, the Hebrew version now, very important, the Torah, the Torah. This is very important. Not the whole Bible, but the Torah. And not in Greek or Latin, but in Hebrew specifically, okay? And what they would do, if you were to call the name of a, a, a famous person, especially a president or a king, whoever, more than likely you would be able to find the name of that famous person in the Torah, in, in, a, in, a, in a coded fashion, the name itself may not be there as, as like the full name, but just like when you look at a crossword puzzle there, I should say, and in the crossword puzzle, it's just a bunch of letters, and then you just cross out, or uh, not cross out, but uh, you circle out or, or, or 
perimeter out. It's not really a circle. <laughs> the, the oval out, the letters to make the word. It is something similar to that. So it's not as if you're reading it in Hebrew and say you look for, um, let's just say Michael Jackson. It's not as if you're reading it and then you see the word Michael here and Jackson down there, because that's, that's not going to make too much sense because, I mean, we never saw Jackson in the Bible. We've seen Michael and, you know, Ronald Reagan. You, I don't think we ever see Ronald or Reagan, but Ronald Reagan is there when you put all the words together, as some of the, the scholars were saying, that that's how the Torah originally was. All the words were together. And then you use it like a crossword puzzle. And you will find Ronald, you will find Reagan, you may find the year he died or the year he was born, even the year he became president, all in that same area. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. And this is the what has become known today as the Bible code. So I want to get into some of this here today. And uh, I'm just actually praying that there's, anyway, let me not even mention it. So let us check this out here. This is the Bible code. And keeping in mind all what I said here, let us just follow along with this for the atomic bomb and also to unravel the enigma codes of the Germans. The invention of the atomic bomb undoubtedly changed the course of world history, but the invention of the computer itself has probably brought about even greater changes. Rabbi Michael Bear Weismandel, a childhood Talmudic and mathematical professor in Czechoslovakia prior to World War II, survived the Holocaust, and after the war emigrated to the United States. Weissmendel, while still a young man, had stumbled onto the notes of the 13th century rabbi Bakya, suggesting that divine information could be derived from the Torah by means of skipping a specific interval of letters. Now, with all the horror behind him, Weissmendel returned to the fascination of his youth, the possibility of a mysterious Bible code. Rabbi Weissmandel, through his diligence and determination in his studies of the Torah, made some remarkable discoveries. The word Torah in Hebrew consists of four letters, a tau, a vav, a resh, and a he, which are equivalent for us to talk about it, as if it was a T, an O, an R, and an H. We should note here that the Hebrew alphabet consists of 22 letters that are essentially consonants Vowels are generally simply inferred. The vav operates sort of what we consider as an o, but it's not considered a vowel. In the book of Genesis, if you go to the first equivalent of a T and count 49 letters and then take the next one, in other words, the 50th letter, is the equivalent of what we would consider a vav. It's, it's what we consider an O. You count another 50 letters, it's a resh, or like our R. You count another 50 letters, and you come to a hey, or like an H. In other words, it's as if you found a T-O-R-H at 49 letter intervals. It spells the word Torah. Rather remarkable in its own right, but one of those things you could dismiss as just a happenstance. But when you get to Exodus, you discover the same thing happens. You come to a T, 49 letters plus one, you get to the O, the R, and the H the same way. And so again, this starts to look very designed. In fact, it's rather interesting that this number 50 are the number of days from the Exodus to the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. In pursuing this further, you go to the book of Leviticus, the third book, and this, nothing like this happens. But you go to the um, fourth book of the Torah, the book of Numbers, the same thing happens, but only if you spell Torah backwards. Kind of weird. You go to the book of Deuteronomy, again you find the equivalent thing but only if you spell it backwards. Now, you, you wonder, what does this mean? And you stand back from it all. It's as if those four books are pointing to the middle book, two forward, two back, to the book of Leviticus. So you examine Leviticus more carefully, and you discover Listen. not 49 letter intervals, but seven letter intervals. Seven letter, letter intervals, every eight letter.
discover not 49 letter intervals, but seven letter intervals. Every eighth letter, you have the word uh, Yahweh, or the name of God. And you stand back from this whole thing, and you realize the Torah is always pointing to the name of God. All right. Now, Rabbi now, Weissman. So before we get too far here, what are we to gather from this thus far? So this is not even the code. Eh? I want you to understand this. Because um, I began speaking of the Bible code, and the Bible code itself basically is, uh, if you want to say, machinery as such. High technology, modern technology, especially at that time, which was used to cipher out the scriptures of the Bible and to link it with modern time. But not even the scriptures, but the the way that the bible is written i should say because again it's not about interpreting a scripture let me be clear it's not about interpreting a scripture or interpreting a passage or let us read this passage and see what it says and and what does it really mean and where does it fit in history no it's about just putting the scripture or the bible into the computer or actually uh, uh, putting what you're looking for into the computer, specifically dates, names, places, and then it will show you where it's mentioned in the book, in that in that cryptic form as such, and what is related to it. That is really how that software works. What we just saw a moment ago is not necessarily the software, that's just naturally how the book is written. Now, I want us to keep this in mind eh? because the reason why you see us do these sort of programs in a family, this is not for entertainment. We have a, a, a love for our people becoming intelligent and becoming intelligent thinkers. This ain't all about right and wrong and which one right and if the Bible and we don't use the Bible because people would be commenting, oh, time we stop talking Bible and we have more important things to talk about. What more important things? Like what? Anything more important that you think we have to talk about, I'm sure we talk about it. What are you talking about? <laughs> and most ones, the reason why they don't want to hear no Bible talk because they believe the Bible is dangerous. The Bible is not for us and wasting our time but look how much of your people using the bible so if you think it's something that for us to let go what if, what would be better than having a civil conversation about it and coming in and giving your contribution so we can hear your intelligence your common sense your sensible thinking and then make the decision that you have made we're too ignorant in our behavior you know what i'm saying reality now look at this. And what I'm saying doesn't mean it's it's that means it's a miracle book or it's the word of God. It just means that whoever devised it in its Hebrew form had a sense of mathematics and purposely etched in mathematical form the Torah and the name of Yahweh in the in in, in the books of um Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and Numbers. This is serious. So now, as he saying, the Hebrew letters that would align with the T and the O and the R and the H were all 49 letters apart. So you open Genesis, you come across the T, 49 letters, they come across O, 49 letters they come across the r 49 letters they come across the h 49 letters they come across the t and you just go and go until the book done you come to exodus you run into the t 49 letters after the t you come across the o 49 letters they come across the r 49 letters they come across the h and 49 letters they come across the t again o r h until exodus done then go to Leviticus. You don't find it. It's we, we don't see it in here. Okay. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Eyes numbers. Which one next? It is well, anyway. Numbers, Deuteronomy. Yeah. But it's 
This time now, you see back to front. You come across the H, 49 let letters, they come across the R, 49 letters, they come across the O, 49 letters, they come across the T. 49 letters that come across the H, 49 letters that come across the, 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 the R, 49. No, I've never done this. I've never done it myself to put my neck on the block for it. But this is what the experts say. Those who can read the language, read the letter, I don't feel that anyone is lying there. That would have been quickly debunked. Because that's very simple. Once you understand Hebrew, you can go and count it for yourself. Okay. It's a simple thing to really do, really. You don't even have to understand it. You just have to know the letters, the, the symbols, their symbols too. And then go and count. You can count. Yeah, we all can do it and see, okay, it's correct. So the Torah is spelled back way. 49 letters, 49 letters, 49 letters in both Numbers and Deuteronomy. And, and spelled the right way as such in Genesis and Exodus. 49 letters apart until the book done. That's serious stuff. That's a serious, you know what I mean? They had to be take all night to figure that out. <laughs> and then now in Leviticus, the book of the priesthood, the holy book, eh? seven letters apart. Y-H-W-H, Y-H-W-H, Y-H-W-H. which is the name of Yahweh, for those who may not know. Interesting. I mean, family, listen. This is a serious time we're living in it. And knowledge is key. It's not everything you hear, you have to put up a flag to say, okay, let me see, I, I agree or I disagree. I don't believe that. You know, and all of this kind of thing, man, that's ignorant thinking. Be able to digest information and say, wow, that's okay. That's it. I mean, why you want to tell me? That's not interesting. Whether you believe in the Bible or not, you, you can't tell me that's not interesting. Men can do that. You know. It doesn't mean because of that it, it's from God. Men can literally figure out a way to cipher that out. It's high science. It's not man, man being built great massive pyramids that align with stars. But it's obviously a scientific mind. But it gets deeper than this. Eh? It gets much deeper than this. Let us uh, continue with this one here. Is in fact random, or is in fact well beyond what you'd expect to find at random. The key to statistical significance is how many related terms are found in a small area of biblical text, and how many characters are in each term. Short words in lots of text are very likely just coincidence. So if all text can produce words at equidistant letter sequences, what makes the Torah codes unique? Now it's amazing. And only in the Bible do you find this. When, for instance, oh, hold on. by that is Michael Dawson. He's the one that wrote the book, the Bible Code. As the book, I, I, I read the book several, uh, several, several years ago. In the Bible, do you find this? When, for instance, by skipping an equal number of letters, you spell out President Kennedy, the very next letters in the same skip sequence say to die, and Dallas is encoded in the same place. When you look for Shakespeare, the very next words in the same equal distance skip sequence say, we'll present plays on stage, and Hamlet and Macbeth are encoded in the same place. You could find Kennedy or Shakespeare in some equal distance skip in any big enough text. If not in War and Peace, look in a bigger book. Eventually you will find some equal distance skip sequence that does spell out the name of any historical figure. But only in the Bible will you find encoded consistently in the same place accurate related information. In order to test the ELS code theory, the research team created a program according to strict scientific and statistical rules. The usable text would be only the book of Genesis, some 78,000 letters. In order to make certain the results could not be tainted by subjective interpretation, they selected the names of 34 okay, of Israel's most famous... So what you got there now, we have 
Um, okay, I want you to get it good, eh? So we're not just playing with it. There's a sequence, a letter sequence, as Michael Jossin was saying there. So they were utilizing a certain letter sequence, eh? And uh, the letter sequence is showing you, uh, what do you call it? You get President Kennedy's name, President John F. Kennedy. You get his name in the letter sequence. All right. But now, in that specific letter sequence, the adventure. Um, in that specific letter sequence, it is the information. After you spell out President Kennedy, you know, however you spell President, you spell it out, the letter sequence. So if it's, he didn't explain what the letter sequence was. But uh, let's just say it was six letters apart. You, you, you spell it till you get President Kennedy. Then now, after that, the word to die came in. So after spelling President Kennedy's name in with the, this letter sequence, then you have to die, same letter sequence, not just the letters, but in the sequence. And then Dallas, which is the place where he died. Interesting, isn't it? All right. Then he goes on to say, Shakespeare also. So when you look for Shakespeare, because obviously somebody's going to say, hey, let's try to find Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. So when they go and they look for Shakespeare, you have, uh, and this, remember again, eh, this is not in English, this is in Hebrew. And it's not the word shake in Hebrew or spear in Hebrew, but it's a letter sequence. So you're looking at the whole chapter and verse or whatever you're reading, and you clump all the, the words together. And it must be in Hebrew. It's Hebrew we're talking about. And then you call for Shakespeare. Remember, the software has been created, so it's nothing hard. You just put it in the computer, call for Shakespeare, a famous figure. And you see his name show up and the sequence between the letters is three or 10 or even if it's 12. But the point is the same sequence will follow, same 12 and it says, we'll perform plays on stage. And then it says, I think it says Macbeth and um, some other play that we did, Shake the Spear is famous for. Now, interesting again, But what happened now is that even in this modern day time, this is how you could give credence to even when you hear me talk about the Shakespeare written in the Bible. This is a, this is a scripture I had pulled up here for something else, but let me see. So, so, so Shakespeare, when you read, of course, the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms, in Psalms 46, the book of Psalms in Psalms 46 speaks about um, what they say here, super cheap flights. Yeah, speaking of flights, family, make sure you, you I don't know how cheap that is, but make sure you get your tickets specifically to make sure you're with us by the 17th of June. And again, if just like that ad was trying to say a moment ago, if you're looking for the best price, you can contact us as well. Remember, the time is drawing very, very nigh. It's just like about 17 days away from the summer solstice experience, family. The summer solstice experience right here in Antigua with us. Rastafari experience Antigua. Yes, honorable. Yeah, give thanks, you know. Remember, everything is in order for you. The experience itself. For sure, we're talking about the double hike, the Green Castle Hill, the yoga retreat, the cannabis tour. So many different things will be taking place. Uh, uh, the, 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 the star star night watch. And of course, our wonderful lecture and, and the Naya Bingy on the hill. So make sure you 
you book your space early also family accommodations everything is in perfect order for you mm -hmm. now now in the book of the bible the the bible itself that we the english bible history says <clears throat> that um oh, i was looking at it yeah pardon me yes history says that shakespeare it's not the Shakespeare version of the Bible, it's the King James version of the Bible, because King James basically commissioned it. But Shakespeare is said to be the dandada behind of it. So it is said that Shakespeare and 46 of some fellas here translated this. I, I, I read one place they said he was 46 years of age, but I'm not sure about that. Somehow that I don't think that coordinates with when he was supposed to be born not unless because you know shakespeare again if, if we go deep into this study shakespeare is almost like a mythical character you know? believe it or not you know? one say that the real shakespeare is john d you understand and others say that uh there's this other fellow that they say he is that's why they say many times you see pictures of shakespeare he has a line running down his face like as if he has on a mask because it's it's like uh it's like a pseudo name Number one, it's a pseudo name given to his plays and his books, but it's a pseudo character in general. It's, it's, it's a deep, deep reasoning. We'll get into that maybe one of these times. But anyway, Shakespeare, as we know Shakespeare, is said to have written or, or, or translated, been one of the head translators or the head translator in this King James Version of the Bible. And you can see now in Psalms 46, he has decoded his name in it. It is not as, uh, as mystical uh, elaborate as what we have been talking about thus far, but it's there. Psalms 46, when you count the first 46 words, the 46th word is shape. Now remember, it's, it's him and his 46 people that translated this. So the first 46 letters or words but bring you to shape. And that's from the top. And when you come from the bottom now, and you count upwards the first 46 words or yeah the 46th word will bring it to spear shake spear 46 from the top 46 from the bottom psalms 46 and shake and his 46 compadres translating the the 16 11 for you so you can see it being done. It's obvious that something's up there. It's obvious. It is obvious that, that Shakespeare put his hand into it. If history is correct with him and the 46, well, it's obvious that he did that, or else that is just by chance. One of them coincidence. You, you know, you heard about those things. Yeah. They just coincide. Mm -hmm. We're coming back to Haggai in the in in the in the future of this program so so family you see where we are you get where we're coming from now so when you when you understand that from a, a level that you can more affiliate yourself with shakespeare so when they said now that shakespeare's name now <laughs> wow is seen in the ancient hebrew writing because remember, this is before Shakespeare. This is before John F. Kennedy. This is before all the other names that have Hitler and Ronald Reagan, you're gonna hear. This is before these people here. But you see, all of these people here to you, we can prove that these people here were put in these positions. They were actually made. These are people that were made. That's the truth. Yeah, man, that's the truth. That's why you see so much similarity between Lincoln and Kennedy. They've gone through that. There's so much similarity down to the wives they marry and, and how they marry them and how their wives they age and what they studied. And so many things is like mind blowing. As I showed you earlier also, not in this program, but before how the birth of Ronald Reagan and his 11th birthday aligned with Pope Pius the 11th and, and the 6th of February and so many different things. Yeah, deep science. So they deal with the, the movements of astrology too. 
That's why astrology is so terrible. You understand? Stargazers, they call them people there. Stargazers, you understand? They wonder at the mysteries of the heavens. They're wondering. They're not too sure about the astronomical clock. Mm -hmm. So this is what's taking place. It's a high level of, of, of sorcery. So we're trying to look at this now and see how divine is this that's being expressed here from this Bible code. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. And, contained in and remember, the code, you know, that so, ignited the what I should be doing with the Shakespeare is something similar, but definitely a bit more uh, technical when Shakespeare's name is found in the Hebrew Torah and even behind of him with the same sequence is shall perform on stage and Macbeth and Othello or whatever the other thing was. Very deep. The attention of the world on the Bible once again. In 1994, Michael Drosnin, a writer and former journalist with the Wall Street Journal and the Washington Post, flew to Israel to meet with a close friend of then Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin. He carried with him a letter with frightening implications. Using the Bible code myself, about two years into my investigation, I found encoded the name of the Prime Minister of Israel, Yitzhak Rabin. The only time his name was encoded in the Bible, and crossing his name as plain as day, were the words assassin so, so, will so assassinate. here we say the prime minister he sees his name and the assassin will assassinate rabbi i was rabbi. shocked so i flew to israel and i met with yitzhak rabin's closest friend a very well-known <sighs> israeli writer chaim guri and I told Rabin in that letter exactly what I've just told you. That the one time his name, Yitzhak Rabin, was encoded in the Bible, the words assassin will assassinate, ran right across his name. Are you seriously suggesting the Torah actually says that Rabin will be assassinated? All I can tell you is what's in there. Will you give him the letter? In his letter, Michael Drosnin told the Prime Minister, I have uncovered information that suggests your life is in danger. He went on to explain that it was an Israeli mathematician that had discovered a hidden code in the Bible that appears to reveal the details of events that took place thousands of years after the Bible was written. The letter also pointed out that the information had been confirmed by famous mathematicians and the results have been replicated by a senior codebreaker at the Pentagon using his own computer program. This should not be ignored. Guri read the letter, but his response was not very encouraging. All right, I'll take it to him. But I know the Prime Minister, and I don't believe he'll pay any attention to these Bible codes. Guri's assessment proved all too accurate. The Prime Minister made no attempt to contact Drosnin and apparently ignored the warning completely. And of course a year later, he was killed. Exactly as the Bible Code said he would be, indeed in the very year that the Bible Code said he would be killed, all found a year in advance. I failed because I had tried to warn the Prime Minister. I had managed to put the warning in his hands. But he ignored the warning, and now he was dead. I do not control what anyone does, let alone what a Prime Minister does. I'm used to reporting on events that already have taken place, not telling people what might happen tomorrow. It's a very strange position for me to be in as a reporter. But I cannot ignore this. I'm doing only what I've always done as a reporter. I'm checking out the information. But yeah, the responsibility is in the code. Michael Drosnin explains a series of events in some detail. 
However, Drosnin's discovery of the Rabin assassination in the Bible Code has triggered controversy on a whole new level. Can the code be used to let us see into the future? If not, what purpose does it serve? The Bible codes are there so when the future happens, it confirms Scripture as the divinely inspired Word of God. The Bible code reveals accurate details about people and events that took place who lived long after the Bible was written. We can go to events as recent as the bombing in Listen. Oklahoma where we have the name of the building that was blown up, the Marab building, encoded, Oklahoma encoded, even the name of the man who was arrested and convicted for the crime, Timothy McVeigh, all encoded in a document okay, so that's 2,000 years old. So the bombing now, um, the, 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 the Mura building, the name of the bomber, Oklahoma, all of that is encoded to show that is prophecy being fulfilled. ...was written. We can go to events as recent as the bombing in Oklahoma, where we have the name of the building that was blown up, the Marab building, encoded, Oklahoma encoded, even the name of the man who was arrested and convicted for the crime, Timothy McVeigh, all encoded in a document that's 3,000 years old. Watergate is encoded. The one time that word appears, there's a question. Who is he? President. But he was kicked out. Economic crisis is encoded one time in the Bible. And with it is the year of the great stock market crash, the year the Great Depression began, 1929. The collision of the comet with Jupiter in July 1994 found two months before the collision took place was encoded twice in the Old Testament with the exact name of the comet, Shoemaker-Levy, which had only been discovered a year earlier. In both cases, the name of the comet actually crossed the name of the planet, Jupiter, and in one of the encodings, we had the exact day of impact. Of course, World War II and the Holocaust are very clearly encoded in extraordinary detail. We have Hitler encoded with Nazi and enemy and evil man and slaughter. The whole world was saddened and astonished when Lady died. No, no, you hear all of this, eh? I mean, that's a lot of encodement. And those who may be just joining us, well, don't be afraid or ashamed to go and watch this from the, the beginning, eh? Some of us, we, when we drive, when we join live stream, even if it's the last 10 minutes, we say, oh man, I missed it. And then we go and look for something else to watch. I don't get it. Go and watch the thing from the beginning. <laughs> hey, there's enough things you miss if you're just coming in. So don't feel it. Love, love, love. Go and watch it from the beginning. So those who have been here from the beginning, I don't have to keep saying the same thing over. But, but the Bible code again, eh? remember, these were not just names they found in the Bible as such as simple as we did the shake and spare and that thing. These were number sequences and the, the, the software allowed the sequence to show itself. But what is really bringing it home is that the series of events that has to do with their life is in the same sequence of numbers that you found their name in. That's basically what's going on here and that, that, that's some deep stuff in the Torah, Hebrew Torah, not just the Bible in general, Hebrew Torah, Hebrew too. Okay, now this one here, I said this one is a real uh, uh, show stamper. Incident in Paris, France. Yet Talking when about we began to Princess do Diana's death. And, and slaughter. The whole world was saddened and astonished when Lady Di tragically was killed in an accident in Paris, France. Yet when we began to do research with the computer program, we were astonished to discover that even this event had been recorded in ELS codes 3,500 years before it occurred. We found the name Princess and Diana encoded at the same ELS distance. Then beside it, we found the word Spencer, her real name, together with Wales, as she was the Princess of Wales. Then in the surrounding verses, we found encoded France and Paris. Then we looked and discovered tunnel and river. 
We found the very year, 5757, which is 1997 in our calendar. We found Av, the month of August when she was killed. Most remarkably of all, we found the name Fayed, her companion in that tragic accident. All of this encoded 35 centuries before the event actually occurred. Logic tells me that the Bible was encoded to give us very important information. It was encoded, certainly, by some intelligence that could see ahead, across time. It was it encoded, was encoded in by intelligence that, that could see across time, you know, and I would be, I would actually be hoping that the brothers that will be with me tonight in the Tiger's Temple, it would be nice if, they, if they're watching the same thing that I'm watching here, you know, um, just to get an idea, because, because, you know, this is very important in the subject area. Um, again, whether a person believe in the Bible or not, I think this is very, very important in the whole aspect of the subject area. I'm going to drop one more thing for you. Mm -hmm. I think, <laughs> who is this fella here? <laughs> Today. While the critics of the Bible Code continue to attack the original Bible Code discoveries, Numerous Bible Code software developers have commercially advanced Bible Code research way beyond the pioneer findings of the late 1980s. New ELS research is moving beyond the nominal word association pattern discoveries of the past to complex matrix discoveries. Here's the full Thomas Edison matrix revealing in an orderly model 55 important historical items about his life. In the Bible Code, we've discovered the USA Embassy terrorist bombings in the African nations of Kenya and Tanzania. For example, in the Kenya bombing, there were 19 reference terms with multiple mentions of specific facts that describe the terrorist attack, all located in a compact matrix centered in Haggai 114. Embassy was in all of this is going to say was in a complex matrix center in the in the book of Haggai 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 140 that describe the terrorist attack all located in a compact matrix centered in Haggai 114 embassy was the central term of the matrix with USA crossing over embassy, embassy three times with USA crossing over embassy three times. We found in the same tight matrix, the location being Nairobi, Kenya, August 7, 1998. August 7, 1998, Nairobi, Kenya, embassy, USA, crossing over it three times. The date of the bombing, in the morning at 10.45, that 247 people were killed and murdered oh, by that. All, of that, all of that in it, eh? We also found the names of the three alleged terrorists. The most no, important no, so, warning. No, that's some serious stuff. That is some serious, serious stuff. That is so precise. That is so to the point. You know, an individual would have to meditate exactly well, okay. Exactly how was that done then? What what power? What intelligence would have done that or could have done that? Now, intelligence is shared amongst many types of hearts, you know, whether they be good heart or bad heart. The devil have enough intelligence. The devil have enough, enough intelligence and, and know how to trick you and fool you and write things back, back backwards and think it's coming forward and all of that kind of stuff. But as I'm saying to you, family, what a meditation you're looking at here. It is something that by itself deserves a conversation, by itself deserves a reasoning, especially amongst those who may be extremely critical about the Bible, that is a good reasoning for us to bring up, for us to even look at. But as I said, eh, it's tonight in the temple, tonight in the tiger's temple.
We definitely will be going into a very upful reasoning. Family is not too late. Just contact me right, right now. Right now is the time to contact me and get your pass to come into the Tigers Temple tonight. Myself and the good brother, uh, brother was there, Heru Ma'at, yes, Honorable Jassi, Honorable Prophet Sheldon, we will be in the house. We will be reasoning on the validity of the scripture, the valid validity of the Bible itself, Rastafari and the Bible, uh, what, what, what position we should keep the Bible at this moment, should it be of a key utilization, whatever the case is, yeah, man, we'll be going into all of that. The historicity, uh, a term I hear being used a lot, so let me just jump and use it too. The historicity of the Bible. Yeah, man, I want to get into it. And, and, and we all, at least those who will be on the panel, have come to some conclusion that it is symbolic. Okay, fair enough. But is it fully symbolic, totally symbolic? Or is just half of it symbolic and some of it literal history? We need to get into that this evening. It's going to be a wonderful sit down. I'm looking forward to each and every one of you being there with us. As I said, just contact us, you know, and uh, make that contribution. And we're definitely going to have a wonderful time. I myself am going to put myself in order to make sure we are ready for that. The Tiger's Temple. And if you missed that, every Sunday, 8 p.m., we gather in the Tiger's Temple family every Sunday, 8 p.m. We're here, ready to go and carry it to another level. So give thanks, life giver and the keep of life. As I said, if you're just coming in, go and check the video from the top man. Up full, up full reasoning and discussion and share it too. Holy Manuel I, Celestia, Ja, Rastafari. <laughs>